What's up guys? Good to see you here on the Mr. Dig channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm Ryan and today we're up here near Lexington, South Carolina at a company called Resoil. So this is a subsidiary business. So if you watch the video I did with our buddy Bio Joe uh, down back closer to home where he's making the uh, biofuel, this is where that food waste is coming to. So he's going to bring it here. They're going to tell us all about it, show us how it goes from start to finish making compost here at Resoil. All right, so back of the building is where all the magic happens. Yep. Uh, we've got, we get our depackager material, all our food waste material comes in on roll-off trucks. Okay. And we dump it in these pits. Uh, and that's the material we saw down in- In Aiken. In, in, in our home, Warren, yeah. Warrenville. Uh, yeah. Um, so we bring it in and we will dump it, dump those roll-offs in these pits here. Then we'll mix overs and uh wood chips either pallet chips or or wood wood okay. grindings mix that it goes outside and this pile over here is kind of a pre-composting pile gotcha that it then we'll sit out here for a week to 10 days and, and it'll start okay. it doesn't doesn't get up to temperature where it needs right. to be it'll just start cooking it starts and, cooking and, and so matt what is the ratio that you're mixing your carbon to your nitrogen. Generally, so your carbon is your wood material, obviously, right. then your nitrogen is gonna be your, your food waste. Right, um, and so it's five to one. Okay. Five, six to one. Okay, um, so five, five, five parts carbon, one part nitrogen. Right. Gotcha. Um, and so it's pre-mixed out here. Generally, those temperatures out here get around 120 degrees. Okay. Um, it pH adjusts and it, it, it gets to where it start is ready to be jump started. Gotcha. And then we'll move it from out here and we'll go inside to our bays inside. Okay. Um, and then we can walk in here. Yeah, this is super interesting. I so we we use we get uh, wastewater, um, liquid the material. And we'll bring it in and put it in these tanks and use that to for moisture levels on the on the product the incoming product gotcha so we're and, using and I say, i've seen with some tanks on the other side it's or, rain or rainwater, rainwater so you're collecting rainwater, rainwater too. tanks we use that to hydrate hydrate the piles that's as well. great man um the wastewater that we get from uh from our aiken plant or from what uh warrenville plant yeah is used to get the initial moisture right um, it's got organic material to it. It's sugars, sugars and all that and good, all stuff, kind of good that, stuff that, that the microbes love. That's right. And so we'll mix that in. That that helps get our moisture levels right for coming inside. Okay. Then it goes from outside, and we will load these middle bays first. And so, essentially, this is two sides. So we'll we'll bring it in here. We'll. It generally comes in about 120 degrees. Generally, after a day of air, these piles are aerated, okay. uh, kind of a modified aerated static pile. Where we have air pipes to the sides of the bays. Okay. We've got the ability to water over top, so we keep the moisture levels right, um, and we keep the oxygen levels right. Oh, I, bet for, I bet it's happy in there. So And so it'll jump from 110, 120 degrees, generally to about 140 degrees, a lot of times overnight overnight um, and so once we get to the 131 degrees the magic composting number for killing pathogens um, that's when the clock starts okay generally we we are on a one-week rotation so it'll sit here for for five days we'll move it from this bay over to that bay we'll be there for five days okay. as long as temperatures are right yeah. but generally once once we get the temperature here it stays the temperature all the way all across. All the way to the end. So yeah. five days here, five days here, five days there. Once we have had it five days over here, it has met PFRP or pathogen right. reduction. Yep. Um, because temperatures across the board, it has been 15 days, essentially with three turns. Right. Um, and so and this is what's considered cooking the compost. Cooking You're the cooking compost. it. You, we want to get all the weed seeds out, any pathogens, right. any bad stuff. When it stays in these bins and stays at those temperatures for a designated amount of time, all that stuff is right. killed and off. Generally, we're between 140 and 155, 160 degrees in here, so that's killing all of the weed seeds. Yep. Anything over 140 kills weed seeds. Anything over 131 kills pathogens. pathogens. And so, once it goes, once it's been in here roughly 15 days, we'll move this 
bay outside to our curing area. Okay. In the curing area, it's common down. It's settling down, it's drying cool, out, cooling it's down, cooling down to where uh, to where it gets to a to a temperature that we can screen it to a, a moisture level where we can screen it. Okay. Uh, it's got to be relatively drier in order to screen. We've experimented with that a little bit in the past, and if it's any wet at all, it just that, plugs we up had, the screens. Uh, you know, we had the hurricane. Oh yeah. Two or whatever tropical storm yeah. a couple weeks ago. We got about six inches of rain that week. The week prior to that, we also had tons of rain, and we ended up with about five inches of rain that week. Oh man! So we had in a two-week <laughs> yeah. in a two-week yeah. period, we had about uh, nearly twelve inches of rain here, okay. which made all of our piles way saturated, too wet, saturated, yeah. and now we're trying to get them dry outside so that we can screen, screen them. them. I got you. Um, now, Matt, where are the fans? The fans are behind the back wall of this. Okay. So on you know pipe duct work and so there's two four inch pipes that on, come out on, on either side, on either of, side the of the pile. And, and are they pushing air at a diagonal at an angle or, uh, up so into we'll the put, pile? We'll put a, a plenum down of okay. wood chips. Yeah. So that gives a nice um, porous plenum route route for the, for the air, air to, to go through okay. to get in and they're on a timer. Uh, all the each bay has its own fan. Okay. They're all on their side. What, what dictates the, the time? Like, is that a temperature thing, or is that just something y'all been playing with over the past and say, okay, we know we need to run it an hour or two and then all for? What um, dictates it's that? Generally, three or four minutes, oh. five minutes. Oh, that's every it. hour. Oh, okay. I thought it would have been a lot more. And it that can help with. It, it helps bending out smells. Okay. It helps keeping the oxygen level right. Right. To to so the microbes, they need everything that we need. They need moisture, which we can add yep. as needed. Um, they need oxygen, yep. just like we need oxygen. And then the food is the food waste or yep. the wood chips or gotcha. all, all the all the product. I, I guess if the pizza. fans did run all the time, that you'd it dry, dry you would dry it, it, dry it out, and then and then the microbes would not be happy. Right. So um, you, you and once it gets dry. Um, there's a point where it will accept water to the point where it won't accept water and gets hydrophobic. Hydrophobic, yeah. And once it gets hydrophobic, it's nearly impossible to get <laughs> to it. To make used, it wet again, yeah. To make it wet again. So we, we try to water accordingly to keep the moisture levels right across the board. This is really cool, Matt. Uh, and so then we move it outside and we can walk over yeah. and uh, show you our curiarian screener. So when we bring the piles from inside to outside, we'll start on that end down there. As we move the piles down the line towards the screener, generally our temperatures out here are 150 degrees, you know, coming straight from outside, from inside. Inside, yeah. And then by the time we've turned it down and turned it down, by the time it gets over here near the screener, temperatures are down in the 90 to 100 degrees. Okay smell any residual smells that may have been generally it's an ammonia type smell mm -hmm. by the time it's gotten down here it the smells are gone okay and how, and just, how long will it take for it to make it all the way down here so right now i think we have eight piles out here eight or nine piles so and we'll, we we ideally when we don't have 12 inches of rain yeah um it's a pile a week okay and so we'll get it down here we'll screen this pile we'll move everything down to the next and it was, you know, and so weekly, the ideal when everything is working, you know, the weather is co cooperating. Yeah, right. By the time we get to here, the temperatures are down, the smells are down, the any issues are down, and it's ready to be it's screened. Ready to, ready and then to we screen. feed the screener, the overs, which is the first pile to the right of the screener. We'll use those overs to essentially inoculate the next. Gotcha. To jump start the next batch because it's still got all those microbes all in it and microbes it's rich in them, in them. Right. so you're, you're just reintroducing We're, those and right that back inoculates in. the next pile so it jump starts and we have seen that at times where we may not have had a whole lot of overs and we were having to use straight wood chips that it's a two to three week jump start right. by being able to use the overs yeah because you've got such colonies already built up on right. your overs because they've just been you know multiplying right. in there and, and there is bins. you know as, as good as we try the overs still have some compost i mean there's you know we, we we try to get all of it out sure but there's still compost in there yeah and so that helps jump start the next batch that's really nice man. um and so six depending on how much we have out here six to eight weeks out here okay so 
you know, two weeks, two or two months to two to three months, depending on weather concerns and things all, such as that. All the variables. All the variables. But between two and three months, we're going from raw product to a finished. That's pretty impressive, earthy, man. Earthy, just smells like good dirt. Yeah, just. and you know, so I love gardening too, Matt. And the thing that I love about compost is that you're that, those microbes we were just talking about. You're then add, introducing those into your yard. Right. It just does wonders for plants and shrubs. It does wonders, and, for, it does wonders for, for the plants, but it also, more importantly, it does wonders for your soil. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, the one thing that we try to tell people is, you know, in April is not necessarily the time to be putting, the best time to be putting compost in your right. garden. Yep. The best time, in reality, is in the fall yep. where the compost can have time to sit in your garden those microbes start do their spreading thing, and start and, spreading and doing their thing and they they build your soil yeah more so than just i mean putting it in whenever is great yeah i mean it's better than not using it at sure all. but the, in reality the best time is to do it in the fall so that it has time to get in and make your soil better right so those microbes can reproduce and 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 make those nutrients available that aren't could be not available at that right at there that point you know, then spring and next summer man you'll see plant growth like never before like crazy. yeah and we have got tons of repeat customers which yeah. we love and yeah. the, you know that that have nothing but good things to say that's Pic awesome. pictures of gardens that are <laughs> that i mean we've got some people that have you know maybe not bought enough of our stuff and had to buy other, other stuff, stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, gotcha. from big box stores or wherever yeah. and then they show us pictures this is your stuff that mm -hmm. is going gangbusters and this is their stuff that yeah. is not necessarily growing at all proof in the pudding right and there so, it? and it's, it's one of those things it gives you a, a it gives us gives me a warm fuzzy feeling yeah that's when satisfactory I see, when that see yeah. and we t we take pride in our work to do to make the best compost that we can right because we want customers we want i want people to say you want them to come back yeah boy, I, i've never used yeah. anything like this yeah it does make you feel good and the other great thing about y'all's business too matt is like you know none of this stuff's now going to a landfill just to right. produce you know gas right it's and actually so, going to a beneficial use i think i saw on the inside it said grow eat what was the other thing uh let's see grow eat recycle repeat or compost right. repeat compost or something, repeat. something yeah. like that so it's, and so it's coming full circle right the majority of our food waste is coming from restaurants or from grocery stores yeah. or from industrial or manu you know, manufacturing manufacturers yeah food manufacturers or distribution warehouses where they may have a freezer that goes bad right. or they may get product in that some for some whatever reason is Can't, is not good not, not and usable. instead of it in the past, we have had lots of customers that send them just tractor trailer loads of food, just to take it to the landfill. Landfill. Now yeah. it's it's so coming to us and making a, a, an amazing product out of it, man. My hat's off to you, dude. This is really cool. So it's uh, we we are we are small but mighty. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. So. Well, I love the setup, man. And then y'all bagging material uh, we as do, well. We do bag. Um, we don't bag as much as we would like right but um we're, we're working on that we have a basic bagger that is labor intensive i got gotcha. you yeah. that um but yes we do sell bags we sell a small compost concentrate which is a super fine screened to like quarter inch less than quarter inch screen product that yeah. is great for house plants oh um, okay great for making compost tea out of gotcha um to water house plants or water your garden yeah um, because that one little bag can make gallons and gallons and gallons of, of compost, compost tea fertilizer tea. fertilizer wow um Very and cool. then you can just sprinkle it over your indoor house plants where you're not and it's in a nice little bag that's not <laughs> something that you have to I mean, yeah. sit on the shelf in the kitchen that's know. that's really amazing um, and then we also do uh roughly one and a half cubic foot bags which okay. is like a 40 to 50 pound gotcha pound like bag. you're buying at a garden center like, right gotcha um and we have various people around the columbia area yeah. we're kind of relegated to the columbia area yeah. at the moment very um, cool but we are that's part of our business we we need to grow yeah awesome i love it man i'll walk over here and just take a look at the look at the material real quick like unfortunately because we do take food waste the yep. biggest problem with taking food waste is contamination contamination or trash yep um luckily 
you know, it, it's bigger bag stuff that oh, gets yeah. pulled out of the screener, so that's not in our finished product. Right. Um, no, it's it's part of it. It's part you of know, it. It, it, it is a across the board, across the country problem. Oh yeah. With not having um, compostable packaging. Packaging. Yeah. Um, and while there are people trying to to do that, um, and it's gotten better. They're still we're we're still a ways still away a from ways it, unfortunately. From yeah, but we have a lot of plastics and stuff still making it into our facility. You know, generally, well, you know, just yeah, like that, it's going to be in there. But, in the there. Screener but the screener is going to get out. that out. And then we're left. The screener is going to pull everything out to three eighths of an inch size. Okay. Um, and we screen everything we have down to three eighths. Three eighths. Beautiful, man. Um, I love it, dude. This is so cool. And like you said, it's not a, a crazy huge operation, but you can tell you're passionate about it. Yeah, I know y'all make a good product, and uh, like you said, small, but, small but mighty. I like that. That's, that's, what, that's what we try to be. I love it, man. Make as most as fast and as good as we can. <laughs> I hear you. Well, as long as long as the good Lord is willing. Is, is willing. And, so. and we don't get another foot of rain. Right, exactly. Oh exactly. man, really cool, dude. I appreciate you showing us around, man. Thank you for your time. Well, we appreciate you coming by. Guys, I hope y'all learned as much as I did, man. These guys have really got it going on up here at Resoil. Small footprint, but making a big impact in the waste industry. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next video.